Let's take a look at the grammatical morphemes and the obligatory context and see how that works on this table. So after you've entered your transcript and you have the 50 utterances or more, depending on how large your sample is, once all of the utterances are transcribed, you can go row by row and determine if any one of the grammatical morphemes are utilized in the utterance. The way I learned to calculate obligatory context was to examine the utterance and determine whether a grammatical morpheme was necessary in order to make that utterance grammatically correct. If the child was trying to say, it's a ghost, and they produced, it's ghost, you could say that that was not grammatically correct and an article was needed to make it grammatically correct. So with that in mind, that's how this was set up. And I have a calculated column here, which is going to just add up how many obligatory context grammatical morphemes are indicated for that particular utterance. And in this column, I indicate whether or not the grammatical morphemes were used. And in some cases, the grammatical morpheme was not used. So I left myself a note here and I indicated that the grammatical morpheme for irregular third person could have been used. And that's how that would work. So if you indicate per row, per utterance, these two pieces of analysis, then it's going to extract that information and summarize it for you. So these two rows here, there's nothing indicated here. So those wouldn't get pulled into the report, but everything else that has information here is gonna get pulled into the reports. And we'll take a look at that in a second, but I wanna show you how to enter the grammatical morphemes. You look at the utterance and then you make a selection here. And here we see a contracted auxiliary verb. So we can put that there. And in addition, the child did use it. So a simple comment like this is all you need to do. Now, if there were more than one grammatical morphemes that occurred or should have occurred in that utterance, you would have to do them one at a time. So here we see that we have the article the, so I'll grab that. We also have an auxiliary. So you can only use dropdowns to select one item at a time. If you pick a different one, it's going to replace it. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to copy and paste. And how I would do that is I would just select the first one. So let's select the articles first. The next grammatical morpheme that needs to be associated with this utterance is contracted auxiliary. But as you see, it replaces the selection. So in order to get both of them in there, you can refer to this dropdown up here and select the other grammatical morpheme and just highlight it and copy it and then go into your cell. I'll make this larger so it can be seen. Go into the cell and then you can hit either control enter or alt enter to shift down a row within the cell and then just paste in the other grammatical morpheme. And it's going to give you this invalid error, but that's okay because we need it to show that it's more than one. As you see in this particular utterance, there were three grammatical morphemes that were obligatory. And here there are two and so on. So what, what's going to happen now with this information is it's going to get exported into this obligatory context report. And that report looks like this. Anything that comes from the language sample that you just edited will be imported here automatically. It's using a query function to do that. So you're basically seeing a display of everything except for those rows that do not have an obligatory context indicated on there. So you can go through this and you can make any notes that you want. You can maybe indicate that the child did not exhibit certain grammatical morphemes where an obligatory context was required. And up above this sheet, I have the chart and you can make additional notes here as well. So this, you get this report without having to do anything. And if you wanted to highlight something, let's say the preposition on, because that grammatical morpheme was not produced. Nothing is on the sheet showing me that that was used. But present progressive ing, once I make the selection, I see where those grammatical morphemes were used. I see the utterance number and I see the utterance itself and I see any notes that I made. So this is just a highlighting tool.
although I'm selecting one grammatical morpheme, it's going to search the sheet for anything that at least contains that grammatical morpheme. So you see what's highlighted here has other grammatical morphemes for that utterance, but because it contains it, it was highlighted. And this is here to just help you navigate the sheet and analyze the results. Once you delete the cell here, everything should be unhighlighted. There is also, if you want more analysis, you can use this worksheet here, but it is a manual process. It works in the same way where you would go through each of the grammatical morphemes, one through 14, and the sheet again is importing whatever you have transcribed in the language sample itself. For this grammatical morpheme, you would enter all of the utterance numbers where it was obligatory. So we see here that it was obligatory in 36 and 46. So I would enter 36. It counts it similar to the morphemes are counted in the language sample template. It's going to add up the slash marks. What needs to happen next is you would copy that into this use column. Here's where your analysis occurs. So right now, it's showing that out of the two opportunities to use this grammatical morpheme, the child used both. But there are instances where the child will not produce the grammatical morpheme when it was obligatory in the utterance. Let's look at that. Utterance number 37 for grammatical morpheme 11 was obligatory. So I put a slash mark. So we need one opportunity. And out of those opportunities, did the child produce it? In this case, no, it was not used. When you enter the words not used in the use column, it's going to highlight that row. If you put the words no opportunity, or at least the abbreviation, it's going to highlight it a dark blue. For this particular language sample, I know that the child did not produce the preposition on, so I'm going to just abbreviate and say that there was no opportunity. And if I double check on the sheet for the preposition on, nothing is highlighted. And this is assuming that everything in my language sample template has been coded correctly. So obviously, if I missed it here, it's not going to be found when I look at the obligatory context worksheet. If there was no opportunity for that grammatical morphing to be produced, I would put that in there just so that we have all of the information. And this process can be a little bit tedious, so I left it as an option. But there are some functions in here that are working to help with the process. And so I entered the information that was applicable for this language sample here. And this is the resulting table. I can go in and select a description for the percentage that is being displayed. And if these descriptions need to change, you can click on the header and select the link. And make sure you choose unhide if there's anything that's hidden. And it's going to highlight the table that you can edit in order to affect the drop down here. So if I added a new description, I would be able to see it now in this drop down there. And similarly, if you need to make any edits to this, you can go ahead and do that in this field. And this is bringing in the age from the language sample template itself. And that's an overview of how the obligatory context reporting works. Next, we'll take a look at the analysis tables and all of the other reporting fields that are available in the language sample template.